again, storyboards isn't something I work with all the time. Uh, when you really need storyboards is when you're doing a lot of CGI. Then it's really important to have storyboards. And, and that's even on 24, we've done storyboards only for that. Uh, you know, we had a plane landing on a, on a, on a freeway. So obviously we weren't going to land a plane on a freeway. There were certain shots that we needed to do CG. And then the best thing to do is put a storyboard together so everyone knows all the elements that, that are going to that are going to happen. Uh, sometimes with an action scene, the second unit director, well, we do very little second unit, uh, but it was Joseph Hodges, our production designer, would do a lot of that. He would storyboard it because he sees everything visually. And it was an easy way to communicate the shots he wanted. But for me, the storyboard, again, is in my head, especially for action. It's funny. I, I just I just know what all the shots are. And I it, 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 see the, the problem is time, you know, and probably when I, it, you know, if or when I do a big feature, I'll have more time and maybe I will storyboard. But in the world of television, that time that you take to storyboard something that's already in your head, you're wasting somewhere else. It means you're not looking at another location, you're not spending time on the script, you're wasting it somewhere else. So the, the time that you have, and you know what, it's no different whether you're doing a feature film, I think, uh, a student film, you always have limited time, always. It doesn't matter if you're $20 million or free, you're always going to have limited time. So how do you use your time? And that's the important thing. And, and to me, storyboarding, it, it's a waste of time. It takes a lot of, a lot of effort to do for something that I can communicate very easily to my camera crew and say, this is the shot I want. There's a very uh, unique technique. I don't think it's unique, but it's, it's something that I've always done on all my shows. Uh, and we do it on 24, and we've done it for seven years without change. We have a very specific system, and I recommend this very highly to everybody, uh, especially students. And that is, uh, we don't have a rehearsal. You know, in television, you don't get to rehearse. Basically, you don't get to, to do, a, not a rehearsal, but you don't get to do a reading of the script, a table read, for example, because there's no time. First of all, getting all those actors together in a room is near impossible because you're shooting every single day. So someone's always working. So that's impossible to do. Uh, secondly, a table read is great when you have two weeks to fix whatever everyone said at a table read. To have a table read just before you shoot is really destructive. Because what happens is the actors want all these changes and you don't have time to make them. So it doesn't really work out so well. So here's what I do to fix that. Uh, and I do this every day on every scene and without fail. And that is at the very beginning of, of the day, say we have a scene to do, say it's in this room, I will bring the actors in and the script assistant and everybody else leaves. Not the DP, not anybody. It's the director, the actors that are involved in the scene and the script assistant so she can follow along on the words. We sit down, we get comfortable, we chat a little bit, how you doing, it's all good, get comfortable, and then we read the script. We don't act it, just read it. We read it a couple of times to make sure that everyone's okay. You know, So that's like the very first time you get to hear all the actors do it, and sometimes it doesn't sound right. And you say, you know what, let's change that word to this. Does that feel better? Good. So we just read it. Just all sit down and read it, uh, which sometimes is very strange because actors are so ready to rehearse it they're like, wanna, where do you want me to stand? I don't want you to stand anywhere. I want you to just sit down. Let's just read it. And we'll do that a couple of times. Then I look right in the actor's eyes. Is this okay? All good for the dialogue? Great. So now I already made a contract with the actors. So they're looking at me going, yeah, the dialogue's fine. Okay? Because the second they do that with me, they can't come back later and say, you know what? It's, it's lousy. I don't like these, these lines. I gave you the opportunity. We were sitting right there. If you didn't like something, we should have changed it right there and then. So right away, you're doing a contract with that. Now, I get the actors and say, here's what I had in mind. You know, I already have a very good idea of where I want everybody. Now, as a director, it's one thing to say, I want you here, and I want you here, and I want you there. But you have to have reasons for every single one of those people to be in every one of those positions. You want them to move from there to here, why are they moving? You have to think about every single one of those moves as a director. You can't say, I want you to move from here to here because it's a better shot. That's a wrong answer as a director to an actor. That might be the reason, but that can't be the, their reason. You have to give them a motivation to move. So basically, I, I give everyone an area. You know, Kiefer, I want you to start here, and by the time you get to this part, I want you to be at the door because then the guy's at the door. So you give them an idea of where you want them, and then you let them do it. You just let them act it out. And then you look at it, and you go, oh, you know what? That worked, and that didn't. You, know, you got there too early. Let's change that. And, and, and you work with the actors. Now, there's no crew around. The crew are all having coffee. 
It's just you and the actors. And that's your rehearsal time. And you work on it, and if you do it four times, five times, and you, you know, the AD is looking at their watch going, oh my God, it's like a half hour. We haven't shot anything yet. It doesn't matter. This is the most important part. Because once you get this, and once as a director, I'm looking at my actors, and they're acting it in front of me, and I'm going, this is great. I haven't shot anything yet. But I can look at the scene like theater and go, this is great. This is really working great. Or I can go, ooh, that's really boring right there. What are we going to do in that one part? Are we going to change the line? Am I going to have you get angrier? What, what are we going to do to make it all great? I don't want just a bit of it to be great. It's all got to be good. The whole scene's got to be good. So I get to work with the actors. And the great thing about not having the crew there, there's no pressure. You know, the actors aren't watching everyone going like this, looking at them, and the AD looking at his watch going, come on, let's go. Forget that. It's not about that. It's about me and my actors working together. Now, when I say this, I mean it. I mean, we've done it for seven years on the show. Every single scene, even if it's just Chloe sitting at her computer typing. Everyone leaves the room. I just sit with her and make sure that it's all good and that, you know, where the looks are going to be, what you're going to type. Maybe she's going to get up. Maybe she's not. But the worst thing you can do as a director is say, I don't need the actor. We're going to set it up without him, you know, and set up the shot without the actor, put a stand in in there, light it all. Then the actor comes in and goes, oh, I thought maybe I'd be standing. And now you've got that weird thing that you've lit it and the actor doesn't want to do it and now you're in a bad place now you're in a negative place instead of being in a positive place so the next step then is to to get it all we now know what it is again I look at every actor you happy there you happy sitting there you happy standing there the second I see an actor going well oh okay you're not happy why what's wrong well I don't feel like sitting I think I want to stand okay let's try it again standing you know I make sure that every actor is really happy now You've got to know that every, and I've done hundreds of shows, that by doing this system, I've never had an actor come back and say, oh, I changed my mind. Because what I've done is I've made a contract with them. I look them right in the eye and say, now's your chance. I'm giving you the chance. You want to change it, change it now. Because once we light it, don't come in here and change it. That's not acceptable to me. So basically, that's, that's the way I work. And then now we've got it, now we bring the crew in. We bring the crew in, we run it for the crew, which means I'm rehearsing it again. So I've rehearsed it two or three times with the actors. Now I'm rehearsing it exactly the way I like it. And usually that's all you have to do. Sometimes even in that rehearsal, someone will come up with another idea and we'll change it again. But usually by that point, we've got it down. The crew sees it, the crew marks it, the cast goes off, and now we set the cameras up. We start to light it. And when the cast comes back, they're completely happy. They're completely happy. They know what it is, they can be running the lines with people, and they're ready to go, and we shoot it that quickly. And we do it in one or two takes, and we're done. And so that's the system that I've used for years, and I recommend it with everybody because it works like gangbusters.